The Rise and Fall of Michael Corleone Have you ever heard the term, we are the heroes of our own stories? This seemingly uplifting and life-affirming statement might hide behind its darker implications. We always have our own reasons to do the things we do. When confronted on why we do certain things, most of us can justify it appropriately. No matter how terrible or heinous our actions turn out to be, we figure out a way to remain the hero of our own story. I overslept because I was doing chores until late at night. I stole the money because I needed to take care of my sick mother. I killed that man because I wanted to protect the ones I love. The Godfather movies communicate this motive through the outcast son turned ruthless godfather Michael Corleone. Michael appears to undergo a drastic change in the beginning, a trend that ripples across the rest of the trilogy. However, what was the nature of Michael's change? Did he evolve into somebody else, or did he simply discover who he was all along? To understand Michael's development, we are taking a look at three crucial components of Michael Corleone, as well as the reasoning and thoughts that play into each of them. These components are how and why Michael joined the family business, why he stayed inside once he joined, and lastly, how he came to lose it all. Part 1. Joining the Family we are introduced to Michael as an American war hero who wants nothing to do with his family's organized crime business. However, this sentiment is no mere rejection. You see, Michael's very vocal about it. Every time he's on screen, it seems like it is his sole duty to let us know that he is, in fact, not interested in any part of the family business. I am nothing like my father. That's my family, Kay, not me. Michael's insistence on wanting no involvement in criminal activities that his family commits makes it all the more curious that the first time he gets the opportunity to commit atrocious acts to save his father's life, he readily abandons his supposed ideals. To understand why Michael seemingly contradicts himself a little too quickly, we're digging deeper into Michael's psychology. An old psychoanalytical idea posits that our personality is further split into three parts. The id, ego, and the superego. Out of the three, the superego is the part of our personality that's responsible for our conscious and moral values and gives us ideals to strive towards. Typically, we obtain the contents of the superego from our parents and their teachings, but it is also possible that our social environment helps shape our notion of what is right and wrong. In Michael's case, we can assume that his superego is shaped by not only his crime lord father, but also the American society he grew up in that shuns the behavior often exhibited by Michael's family. This explains not only why Michael was so vocal about going against his father, but also why it was quite easy to cast aside those doubts when his father's life is in danger. Michael constantly tries to convince himself that he is nothing like his father. That is why he repeatedly says these things. But once the situation calls for it, he finds himself fits very easily to a more flexible kind of morality. Not thinking twice about committing multiple first-degree murders if it meant keeping his father safe. It's not so much that Michael changes or becomes a different person, casting out his ideals in the process. It's simply that he expresses another part of himself that has been there the whole time. From the beginning, both the values his crime family has implanted upon him and the ideological imperative of being a good American citizen are part of his identity. It just so happens that at the time, one became more necessary than the other. What appears to be a sudden switch in personality is just the interactions between the two conflicting ideals Michael finds within him. Despite how Michael sees himself, he finds himself more than willing to commit terrible acts of crime if he could justify it as protecting the father that he loves so dearly. Michael might have murdered two people in cold blood, but given his reasoning and thought process, he gets to remain the hero of his own story. Part 2. Staying in the Family why doesn't Michael leave the first chance he gets? Sure, it might not be that simple to just stop after you have committed to taking actual part in the family business, but what makes Michael stay? Especially after his father's life is no longer in danger. During one of their final conversations, Vito explains to him what it is that he is trying to do with the family business. Not only does he explain that his end goal is to never have Michael take any part of this, he also wants Michael and the family business to eventually be completely legitimate. This solidifies the direction Michael would end up taking the family. Furthermore, it gives Michael a sound basis to stay in the organized crime business. After all, what are a few more life sacrifices if it means you can purify an old, highly corrupted system? 
Michael's worldview in relation to this particular issue is further emphasized through the exchanges he has with Kay after the former finally returns to New York. Here, Kay questions why Michael starts working for his father. Michael explains that at the end of the day, his father is just like any other powerful man. The senators, the presidents, the godfathers. Here we can see that Michael justifies his position as a crime lord by establishing that any man with a position of power who has responsibility over other people would do the type of things that his father does, murders, extortions, and the likes. Michael also tells Kay that the way the family works is about to change, promising her that in five years, the Corleone family will be completely legitimate. These various ideas delivered to Michael by his father enable Michael to, again, remain the hero of his own story. He's no longer just a bully who uses underhanded tactics to get what he wants. He's now somewhat of a martyr, willing to sacrifice his moral values and the lives of others for the greater good. Or at least, that's how Michael sees himself. Part 3. Losing the Family while the first and second movie shows Michael getting deeper and deeper into the Godfather role, the third movie has him try and escape it. At this point, Michael is fundamentally different from how he has been. Michael realizes that his relentless self-justifications cannot last forever. He finds the terrible acts he has committed slowly catch up to him. Michael begins to doubt if he did the right thing after all this time. He might have sold all his illegitimate businesses and built up the Vito Corleone Foundation to solidify the Corleone family's newfound legitimate ways, but deep down, Michael is painfully aware that none of these things are nearly enough to serve as atonement for all the crimes he's committed. Michael ultimately only seeks personal redemption from one place. He wants Kay's forgiveness. Kay is the only person that can give him atonement because she is the one thing in Michael's life that he values without being part of his darker, more sinister life as the Godfather. Here we see how Michael slowly steps back from his narrative biases. For the first time in his life, he questions whether he's still the hero of his own story. This notion could have been the beginning of a deliberate and healthy development of Michael's character. However, as we all know, that does not turn out to be the case. You see, Michael's ambitions still tug away at him, preventing him from fully admitting to his crimes. This is obvious from the exchange he has with Kay as part of the attempt of his atonement. Even when apologizing to Kay, Michael could not let out the words, I'm sorry. He frames it as Kay simply not understanding how things were for him, and that he's not the man she thinks he is. This is Michael's last chance at redemption, with Kay being there with him after all these years. Michael has every chance he would ever need Need to properly acknowledge what a monster he has become. Michael eventually passes on the family torch onto his brother's illegitimate son, Vincent Mancini. His baptism as part of the Corleone family is not the glorious moment that we might see it as. This signifies that Michael has given up. Michael realizes that his attempts at making the family business legitimate has failed miserably. The cycle of killing will continue, and there's nothing he can do about it. Understanding this, Michael turns a blind eye onto what is about to unfold, and tries at living the rest of his life in willful, blissful ignorance. Michael realizes that everything he's done has been for his family, and that he would like to spend more time with them, away from the organized crime life that reminds him a little too much of his past mistakes and failures. This sentiment comes with a heavy price. Michael loses his daughter's life. Despite no longer taking part of any of the killings happening that night at the theater, Michael's sins have finally caught up to him. This ends any chance Kay might have had of giving him genuine forgiveness. Having lost everything, Michael spends the rest of his days by himself, in isolation and loneliness. What does it all mean? The tragedy of Michael Corleone shows us how our own ideals and noble desires can bring out the worst in us. Michael's good-hearted desire to protect his family has led him to lose the very thing he tried to protect. Mental gymnastics, self-delusions, and all-too-human justifications of our own actions can lead us down a path where we not only lose ourselves, but also everything we care for.